The yeah, gentlewoman from Colorado is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you uh, to our panelists for being here today. Uh, as we have heard today, there are numerous concerns related to so-called environmental, social, and governance policies being uh, indoctrinated into accounts by woke asset managers. Today's hearing will help us better understand what Congress can do to ensure that activist stakeholders will not encourage woke corporate activism as we have seen recently with Anheuser-Busch, Disney, and even Nike. Because as we all know around here, when you go woke, you go broke. So Attorney General Reyes, for background, could you elaborate on how asset managers can violate their duties by signing ESG pledges? Sure, there, there are a number of ways. Um, there are federal laws um, that uh, could be implicated. There are state laws, including state consumer protection laws, state securities laws. There are common law contractual agreements that fiduciaries can violate. Um, all of those different laws come into play. Um, and, and one of the reasons why we've filed a lawsuit against the current administration's uh, Department of Labor rule, weakening the fiduciary role and, and the duty and the responsibility of fiduciaries is because we think it, among other things, violates major questions, doctrines, um, violates the, um, the APA, the um, Administrative Procedures Act. So all of those different ways are legal reasons why we're concerned, Congresswoman. Um, when you hold yourselves out as being objective, and you represent to your customers and your uh, shareholders um, that you are being objective, then you must live up to that um, and, and not have a predisposed, predetermined end goal in mind. And, and I'll make one comment. My, my co colleague and my friend, uh, the good treasurer, mentioned proxy advisors don't vote the shares. He's right. In many ways, they're de facto voters because many of those fiduciaries have so many thousands of different investments that they rely almost solely on the proxy advisors. And when the fiduciaries are part of the same horizontal agreements as the proxy advisors, they're all part of one and the same scheme, there really is no free market in that. And they keep talking about free market, and that's why we're here, because there's nothing free about the course of nature of these arrangements. And Mr. Ray, as you state in your testimony, horizontal organizations are made up of asset managers, banks, and insurance companies. Now, I'm aware uh, several state attorneys generals are investigating several of the net zero banking alliance groups, including J.P. Morgan Chase. What have those investigations found to date? Uh, not ready to disclose all of our findings yet, but I, I will uh, say comfortably um, enough that uh, we are continuing uh, our investigations, and we hope that so, you would. So, Mr. Mr. Reyes, considering the Silicon Valley Bank has collapsed and J.P. Morgan Chase bought the bank, has there been any indication that there's been any involvement in ESG policies that uh, that there's been um, while while reestablishing the bank? There may be, but uh, we're, I'm not willing to comment on that from, from based on our. Investigations. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Attorney General Marshall, uh, as the Department of Labor under the Biden administration has considered requiring uh, fiduciaries to consider ESG and employee retirement savings decisions, several 401ks and thrift savings plans allow managers to use their voting rights on behalf of these retirement accounts. A prime example of this is BlackRock. Uh, a primarily left-wing activist fund that uses its status as the fiduciary for several investment funds uh, to, it, to coerce companies into introducing these ESG uh, politics into their retirement account savings. How can Congress help ensure that these companies are not introducing ESG policies into their investment funds and instead are maximizing returns for future seniors that will need to live off of this money uh, in, in these accounts. You know, Congressman, one thing that we heard earlier from one of your colleagues is how partisan this issue is. This body has demonstrated through the Senate by attempting to overturn the new safe harbor rule under ERISA 
in saying that it was an improper way to consider the investments for 152 million Americans and their retirement accounts. This body can clarify clearly under ERISA the role of fiduciary, what that means for the investment return of the individuals who have invested their accounts, and make it clear that objective criteria, not subjective ESG criteria, are used for making those decisions. Thank you very much for that uh, suggested solution. And Mr. Chairman, I yield. Hey, before you click on the next video, if y'all could do me a big favor and hit that like button. The algorithm loves it, and so do I, because it helps promote these videos and get the message out about what our government has been doing. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications, because every time I put out a video, you want to know about it, right? Thanks again, and have a good one. See you on the next one. Peace.